friends, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio, where I'm just getting ready to start on a new project, which is a very near and dear to my heart. Um, it's not something that's for the railroad. It's actually a side project, but it's a structure that I've wanted to build uh, for a long, long time. Uh, I grew up in uh, Orange County. Uh, just south of Disneyland, and spent a lot of time there as a kid. And I have very fond memories of pulling into that parking lot with my dad or my family and, uh, you know, running up to the Disneyland ticket booths to get my uh, A through E ticket book, you know, the, the, uh, the, big, the big 10 or the Jumbo 15 <laughs> ticket books that they used to have. Um, I'm really dating myself now. So I wanted to build one of those uh, vintage ticket books from that, uh, uh, ticket booths from that era. So I, uh, I went online. I did a lot of research. I looked at a lot of photos, old photos. And the, the hard part is not a lot of people took pictures of the ticket booths. Remember, back in those days, you had film and you had a limited number of photos that you could take. So you weren't going to go out and take pictures of every random thing like we do now with our phones and such. Anyway, so it was kind of hard to find a lot of photos. Uh, I want to thank especially um, DaveLand.com. If you've never been to that site and are a Disney fan, you're, you've been missing out. You need to go up there and, and see his fantastic, ever-growing collection of vintage Disneyland photos. Anyway, found a lot of photos there and, and some other places online and uh, was able to figure out a few measurements uh, and design. Um, uh, what I think is a pretty reasonable facsimile of the original Disneyland ticket booths, which were standing in the early 60s when I was a young lad. So I'm going to build one of those. Actually, I think I'm going to build two of those because it's almost as easy to build two as it is to build one. Uh, I've got all the parts here on my workbench uh, for the main body of the building cut out. I designed it and uh, and designed the thing uh, in Adobe Illustrator and uh, have cut the parts on my uh, Flux Beambox Pro laser cutter. Uh, and now I'm going to start putting it together. Let's take a look at the parts. Now I've cut all these pieces uh, out of some uh, 1 16th of an inch thick MDF, which uh, I thought would be a good strong um, material for these main walls uh, because, you know, there's some thin pieces here and you know the grain would be going in multiple directions and they're all going to be painted it's none of its raw wood these are going to be painted white so so this is uh these are the sides and this is the back where the door was this door would actually be facing the park and this it was the front window where you couldn't buy tickets it was actually louvered to allow uh, ventilation through the ticket booth uh, there was no air conditioning in these booths back in those days, if you could imagine. Hot out there in the parking lot. I'm going to start by fixing the rear door panel to the side wall. And it keys in on this beam right here. By the way, um, if you are scaling things from photographs like I did with... Uh, these ticket booths. I couldn't find any plans or anything for them anywhere. So I had to kind of uh, get my best guess as to uh, the dimensions. You could tell a lot by doors um, and uh, the people standing around them. Um, standard doors are 80 inches tall and they're generally 24, 30, or 36 inches wide. There are variations, of course, but, um, you know, once you know that, you can take a door on a photograph and use it to scale the rest of the, of the, rest of the, uh, the structure from that. And I, I do that quite often. Yeah. Then there's a floor piece. This is the floor. And that keys in to a couple of slots right there. So I'll do that next. Because that's going to help keep everything... Nice and square. I <laughs> just discovered. <laughs> I was all proud of myself for designing these parts and cutting them, but um, 
<sighs> even though I do it all the time, mistakes creep in. I uh, I made these floors an eighth of an inch too wide. Not a little bit. An eighth of an inch is a lot in O scale. I mean, that's, you know, that's six inches. Six inches too wide. Um, fortunately, <laughs> I didn't find out until I started gluing the thing together. Ah, fortunately, um, they're uh, MDF, so it's it's relatively easy to um, cut them down to size. So just a quick minor setback. We will get these trimmed down to the right size. You know, and stuff happens like this all the time in model building or any kind of making. You're gonna, you know, problems occur. And um, the, 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 the point is not to get discouraged, you know. You, you, keep, uh, <laughs> you keep moving forward, you know. You, uh, you figure out the solution to the problem and you move on. I could go cut new pieces. Uh, and if I make more of these at any point in the future for any reason, I will amend the file and uh, you know fix this. But for now, I'm just going to uh, trim these pieces down to size and sand and file them up so they're nice and pretty and uh, put it together as if nothing happened. And you know what? If people look at it, they'll never know. We'll know. Nobody else will. So, shh, don't tell anybody. Now, everything should fit properly. Let me just do a dry fit in here. That was the other mistake I made. I didn't dry fit the parts first. I thought I was so smart that I didn't have to do that. that everything would just fit automatically right out of the box. And, uh, that is not the case. But they fit now. So, fix that problem. <laughs> On to the next one. Alright, let's go. So now, let all that glue dry, and then I'll go back and sand these corners nice and clean because uh, those are just going to be painted edges and uh, want them to look nice and pretty. I was a little concerned after the floor fiasco <laughs> if the roof would fit if I'd put all these slots and tabs in the right place, but I just uh, <clears throat> I just checked and yes, everything lines up very nicely. Now I'm just cleaning up the corners here with um, is this some 400 grit sandpaper, light sanding. That's pretty good. Roof on there, temporarily. All right. <laughs> Already starting to look like something. We've got the bare bones of our ticket booths completed. Now I'm going to get a coat of primer on uh, on these. I'm not going to put the roofs on until much later. So right now, get some primer on these and uh, get them ready for final paint. Well, I've got one coat of primer on these, but uh, I want a little bit of a smoother finish than this, so. I'm going to do another, I'm going to do a little sanding and then uh, get another coat on there in a minute. All right, well, we got a pretty good uh, coat of primer on both of these now. I'm liking the results, it's looking pretty good. So the next thing is I want to get the, the final color on there. <clears throat> and the color I've decided to use is some... Uh, Rust-Oleum Heirloom White with a satin finish. I know this isn't model paint, right? <laughs> so don't don't get in the don't get it at me in the comments below telling me that this is not model paint. I know it's not model paint, but I have used it uh, many times before with uh, with good results. So I I don't have any reason not to use it. 
Uh, I'm not really not going to be weathering these models that much. They're supposed to look brand new and pristine as if at Disneyland. So um, I got no problem using a, a nice shortcut like some uh, rattle can heirloom white. So I'm going to uh, set these up on my little board here with some masking tape and start painting. Sneak the roof on there. Yeah. Well, I think that's coming along nicely, don't you? Well, it's been a minute, and uh, over the weekend, I went ahead and uh, designed and laser cut all the parts that I think I'll need for the windows and the doors and uh, the gingerbread trim and the signs, um, little corbels for that shelf that runs around uh, right below the windows. Um, here, let me show you these. These are pretty cool. This is these are the actual ticket windows, which are cut out of some acrylic sheet, and uh, the louvered windows go on the end. This is a uh, 1950s, early 60s air conditioning. <laughs> Just to open the louvers on one side and open the door on the other side, and you've got a little breeze going through there. Now, on, the, on some of these parts, like the doors, I can do a little bit of pre-assembly uh, before painting. The doors are made up, it's like a, it's a four-layer sandwich. You've got um, these two outer layers. This is uh, some 25 thousandth of an inch thick laser board. And those go together like that to create the main frame. Then I've got a piece of acrylic that forms the, the middle part. And then there's a backing that goes on there. So that's some very thin laser board. This, I'm not sure exactly what the thickness of this is. It's very fine. And it's the same stuff we use for our stencils. Put that on the back like that. So this is the interior and this is the exterior of the door. So I'm just putting some, some wood glue on the back of this. And this goes right on here like this. Really important to make sure that it's flush all the way around the outside edges because uh, <clears throat> so it'll fit in the doorway. Now there's this big elaborate uh, signboard uh, that uh, faced the parking lot. It's up on the, on this side of the building on, the, on that big flat roof. So you've got this uh, this backing, which is you know got a lot of wood scroll work on it. And then I have a printed paper uh, sign with the ticket prices and everything that'll go on there. And then you've got a uh, two-part frame that goes over the top of that, like so. So I need to uh, put this two-part frame together next. Again, very important that this all lines up properly flush on the edges. Sometimes you can take a wooden toothpick and carve it down, make kind of a chisel point on there. Get in there. Get those glue blobs. These backing boards for the signs, they have these uh, decorative posts that come up on each side. And I've cut those out of some 1 16th of an inch thick basswood. Uh, 16th of an inch and O scale is 3 inches. So if I want three by threes, I cut it out of some uh, sixteenth of an inch thick uh, basswood to make some three by three square posts. I've got some scribed lines on here that show me where these are going to go. It's nice and straight. So this has got to fit in between these, making sure everything fits properly now, so I don't have problems later. There you start to get the idea the signs. Now I am drilling some tiny little holes down through the top, the tops of these posts. And that is to receive just the heads of some dress pins because there's a decorative knob up on the top, or there was a decorative knob up on the top of each of these posts, a turned knob. Originally I was going to use these big uh, big dress pins, you know, these round knobs, but they're actually 
way too big. <laughs> I look at them up close. So I'm gonna use these shirt pins, which are much closer to the scale size. And I'm using, a, what is this, a, uh, it's like a uh, 71 size drill bit to get in here. This is a tricky operation because it's really easy to split uh, these little basswood parts doing something like this. Making sure to mark the center of the hole before I start using the pin for that so that the drill bit won't wander and to split down the side of this. I'm not going very deep, just like maybe a, a sixteenth of an inch. Just enough to give a positive grab uh, to the to that dress pin head with a little bit of CA on it. Trick I learned, keep this from flying across the room. Grab the part you want with some pliers. Otherwise, <laughs> These go flying and you never see them again. While I uh, work on these, I'll share a little bit of ticket booth trivia with y'all. Um, there have actually been four generations of main gate ticket booths uh, at Disneyland Park in California. Um, and what I'm modeling here is the first generation. And these stood, there were five of these. There were five booths uh, with uh, altogether 20 windows, and uh, they stood at the entrance uh, to the park uh, from you know 1955 uh, through the early 1960s. I'm not sure of the exact year uh, that they were uh, replaced, but they stood through the early 1960s. I haven't been able to find any information on uh, the exact year, so. I know they were there at least through 1962, so that is the year I am ostensibly modeling here the, the ticket prices on the signs that I've, I'm going to uh, apply, uh, reflect the prices in 1962. Now I've had some, uh, some friends who live out in California and have been out to the Southern California Railway Museum. There are some old Disneyland ticket booths out there, and I have a bunch of photos of those. And other people have kindly sent me photos of those. Um, but those are not these. Those ticket booths actually date from 1980. Those were the third generation of ticket booths, the ones that were replaced by the larger buildings that they have now um, out on the Esplanade between California Adventure and, and Disneyland. Um, yeah, they have, and you, the reason you can tell the difference is they have a, they have a, a pitched roof all the way around. A man, what's called a mansard roof, I believe that's what's called, and uh, that actually hid the large air conditioning units that these ticket booths most definitely did not have. They didn't have air conditioning. So four generations. The second generation, they took these booths and they made them a little bit bigger, and then they faced the ticket windows out towards the parking lot. And those stood until 1980, from the early 60s until 1980. So I hope that clears that up. There's a great article over on uh, Werner Weiss's Yesterland.com, which, uh, what am I doing? Which talks about uh, the different generations of Disneyland ticket booths. I'll put a link to that. You can check it out. Now I want to show you a cool little cheat that you can get away with in the smaller scales. I wouldn't try this with anything bigger than O scale, but it's something you can get away with. And uh, see, these, the, these pin heads are kind of flat. What I want is a more rounded ball. So I'm actually just going to take a blob of CA, and you can use a thick viscosity or medium. And I'm going to put one little blob on top of each one of those. And then I'm going to kick it with an accelerator. And when that dries, you'll actually get more of a rounded shape. It'd be in the shape of that blob of CA. And then it's painted and nobody but you and me will ever know. And the next piece I want to do some pre-assembly on is this, um, there's this little bracket that goes all the way around and supports this shelf, which uh, is right under the, uh, under the windows. 
So I've cut a whole bunch of little teeny corbels, little shelf brackets, out of some uh, 1 8 inch thick basswood. And as you can see, I cut a whole bunch more than I'll need. Uh, I always do that with really small parts. I make a bunch of extras because I know myself. <laughs> I will, I will invariably lose some of them somewhere um, in the nether down there on the, on the floor. So using 1 8 inch thick basswood, of course, gives me brackets that are a scale 6 inches wide. By the way, if anybody out there uh, knows what became of the original Disneyland ticket booths, where are they? Were they all destroyed? Uh, were they moved to other uses in the park? I don't think so because they already had ticket booths in each of the land. Um, if anybody knows and he has any information on that, uh, put it down in the comments. I would love to know what the uh, what the final disposition of these were. Um, my, my hunch is that they were destroyed because they had been sitting out in the parking lot for, you know, a decade. So they were probably just torn down. That's my guess. I don't know for sure. What I'm realizing as I go here is that um, I have a lot more pre-assembly to do than I thought. I thought I'd be in here just painting uh, everything today, but there's actually quite a bit to do. It's really amazing how many little parts this thing has for such a small <laughs> building. Um, one thing I just figured out is I should uh, build all of the roof trim on, on the roof panels and get that paint. In fact, I should have done it before I painted these roof panels, but hey, you know, this is what happens when you make things up as you go along. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do now. Cut some, uh, some O scale, these are four by fours. Use that kind of as a brace all the way around. And I'm just gonna build up all the roof trim. I've got some laser cut gingerbread that matches what was in the park at the time and that's going to go down there and i've got these posts and those are going to get uh, little knobs on them similar to what i did on the sign and i've got caps for the posts and all that so yeah i think i'm going to build uh the roof trim on both of the roof panels and because it'll be much easier and better you'll get better results i think to paint it in situ in place than to try and do it all separately and then put it together so let's do that
Well, I ended up doing a lot more pre-painting work on this than I had, than I thought I was going to do, um, because I guess I didn't really think it through. <laughs> <laughs> um, I ended up finishing all of the, the moldings around the top of the roof, all that trim, uh, the gingerbread, of course. And uh, take a look at these moldings. This is just um, stripped lumber built up in layers. Uh, you've, got a, you've got a one by eight here with a one by four on top of it and another one by four laid flat on top of that. Uh, I put the caps on the posts and I added uh, pins uh, to represent the balls on the end of these posts. So let me just show you this real quick. Drop that in there. That's how that sign board slides right in there. Those are two separate pieces. So now I need to uh, finish out the other roof for the second ticket booth. And then I think, I think <laughs> we can start, to, we can paint all these. <laughs> Well, I've got everything painted, and now I've already started on adding the windows. And uh, off camera, I was experimenting with a couple of different ways uh, <clears throat> to adhere the windows to the window frames. Basically, each window has an inner window frame and an outer window frame that goes over that. And then the, uh, the clear acrylic, the laser cut acrylic, is going to float in between the two. And the, uh, the best way I've found, actually, is to uh, take one of the inner frames and coat it with some spray adhesive. And then I take one of the, uh, one of the windows. This is one of the ticket windows. And remove the, uh, the backing from one side. Get this off of here. It's nice and sticky. I can adhere the window here, and just um, there are some little laser scribed marks around the window frame that tell me exactly where to put this so I get it centered on there. And I can press down on it without fear of uh, getting a big thumbprint on the uh, on the acrylic because it's still got the backing sheet on it, which I'm going to try and take off now. The acrylic. And then I can just take the whole mess and drop it into the window frame. All right. Now I just need to do all the rest of them. I'm particularly excited about uh, these louvered windows. It's such a recognizable <clears throat> mid-century detail. You know, it's, you know, it's not something I usually get to do working in the Old West most of the time. So that's a fun thing for me. Now I've taken the external frame for the louvered window, which is quite delicate, and uh, painted it with some Vallejo silver because these, uh, these things actually had aluminum frames. Just drops in there on top like that. Look at all the glue on it. But that's the way it goes. The frames on the uh, ticket windows appear to be wood painted white, so I'm going with that. Also, a very, very delicate piece. Let's just go right over the top, like so. One thing I noticed in my research is that there were uh, there were blinds in these windows. They look like the good old roll-up blinds that you pull down. You know, the, the ones that you let go in the cartoons, they go flap, 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 like that. Hit Daffy Duck in the face over and over. Those. So I believe they had those in the windows. I'm going to make those. I'm going to model them with some, uh, some manila file folder paper, one of my favorite materials for such things. Um, also, a lot of times I noticed they wouldn't have every window open. So you had um, five of these ticket booths, that's 20 ticket windows. They didn't always need 20 ticket windows. 
So it, oftentimes they would have one window open on this side and then this window open on the other side and these would be closed like so. The blinds would be down. Um, and that, of course, probably gave the women that worked inside <laughs> more room to move around because it's pretty tight uh, pretty tight quarters you imagine four women in there and that had to get kind of crowded so i'm not sure what color these were so when in doubt i'm going to use my artistic sensibilities and i think green would look good so i'm going to color these green with a with a green sharpie now a good question to ask here is, you know, why a green sharpie? Why not? Why not green paint? Well, you see that? See that sheen it gets on there? That looks exactly like the sheen, the same sort of uh, color and texture you see on those old roll-up lines. I use it because it's the best way to get this look. I think. I want to do these signs next. In addition to the big uh, marquee sign that was up on the roof, these booths had signs in between the two ticket windows, which only makes sense, so you could read it while you're up there at the window. And I have created or recreated those graphics uh, from photos that I found with uh, prices that are actually accurate for 1962 and colors and layout and all that is as accurate as I could make it uh, for that time period. Um, printed it out on some nice uh, photo quality inkjet paper on my home inkjet printer, which by the way is nothing fancy. Um, the trick is just to use the right paper and the highest quality of photo settings when you're printing. So now I'm going to spray the back of this with some Super 77 adhesive. And I'm going to laminate them to uh, some Bristol board, which is this um, very thin, it's thicker than paper, but thinner than illustration board, often used by, uh, by people in the comic book industry. Just need a smaller piece, I can get rid of the rest of that. So yeah, we'll get some glue on the back of this and paste it up on here. And this just gives the, uh, the sign some thickness. Makes it look more like they were painted on plywood, which I guess they were. My best guess is that they were. Uh, now, before I cut these out, I'm actually going to spray them with uh, a clear satin acrylic finish, which will protect the printout and also give it sort of the same level of gloss as the rest of the structure. I made more of these than I would need. If I messed up, I would have some extras. Need two for each booth, one on each side. So that goes right there between the windows. Just diluting down some Eileen's tacky glue. And Eileen's is a PVA, it's extra heavy bodied uh, PVA glue, extra tacky. Good for things like this. Now I want to start building this little uh, customer shelf that uh, wraps around three sides of the building. Gives you a place to get your money out, right, when you're buying your tickets. So I've already created the little brackets. Put those on first. Make sure. I want them about a scale inch below the windows, so I have room for my shelf. And I need one on this side. Just using a piece of uh, one by stock to measure. 
sure I've got a good space there. So I've cut the pieces for the little shelf that runs around three sides of the booth. And the photos, it looks um, it looks like wood. It's rather yellowish. I'm guessing it's probably oak or something that looks a lot like oak. I'm just uh, taking the scale one by eight and giving it a, some stain with some uh, Minwax Early American. Start on the end. Hopefully all the miters will line up properly. I'll go back and round the ends, the edges, so there's not a sharp corner sticking out. I noticed that those were slightly rounded on the prototype. Down along the base of the structure, there's a, it looks kind of like a molding. Uh, it's kind of a, I think it's a kickboard for all the people to come and stand at the counter. So rather than it being white, it's kind of a dark gray in most of the photos I've seen. It seems to change with the era. I'm guessing it was probably vinyl in later years. Originally it was probably wood and then they probably changed it out to vinyl because it took a lot of abuse. It looked like it's about six inches high so I'm uh, painting a piece of uh, one by six that I'll cut to length to represent that and just wrap around the bottom of the booth. That's probably enough. Oh, for the color, I just mixed together about half and half um, uh, Vallejo Black and Vallejo Light Gray. Now I'm working on the, the roof sign, the one that goes right up here. And I'm trying to figure out the best way to go about this. What I think I'm going to do, I've already cut out the, uh, the printed paper sign. And this goes on top of this. So what I think I'm going to do is um, put some spray adhesive on the back of this and just kind of drop it on there and then I can glue the whole thing onto the backing board. So I just need to tape this so I can get some adhesive on the back. And we'll go from there. I'm just using a little bit of the overspray of the adhesive to hold that in place while I glue this on so it doesn't move around. There we go. Put a little bit of glue on the back. Oh yes, that pleases me. <laughs> I love the way that looks. Fantastic. Now I can start assembling the door. Got my laser cut acrylic piece here and I've taken the clear backing off of one side. Got my door frame with, acrylic, with uh, adhesive on the back. Just drop that in there like so. Okay. That gets a backing sheet, a backing piece, which is right here. Get some adhesive on that. Oh, so satisfying. We've got our door sandwich. Now the doors each get some tiny little doorknobs and lock plates. I laser cut these pieces. I don't know if you can even see them and put them together. And um, I painted them with some um, Vallejo 
metallic black. And that's to sort of represent those old fashioned doorknobs you might have seen, you know, on your grandmother's house or whatever. I don't know what the actual doorknobs on these doors look like because I haven't been able to find a single picture that clearly shows the the back side of the ticket booth. So I'm going I'm using a lot of educated guesswork right now for that. Tiny drops. And I've got some scribed lines to follow on my door. I'm just using the tip of my hobby knife to hold that. I stuck it right in the keyhole. One of the last details for the door is this, um, it's like a square molding down here. Uh, in fact, it goes uh, all the way around the building. There's a, three squares here, three squares here, two smaller ones in the front. And so I've uh, cut some pieces and painted them some of that uh, sunshine yellow. And now I finish up the door and then I can uh, put the rest of them on the building as well. Let me get some fresh glue here. Once again, on the door, I've got a scribed line here to use as a guide. I know exactly where to put this. There we go. Looks like Disneyland, doesn't it? All right. Now I'm going to install the door. Use some CA to put that in there. There's a bit of a gap around the edges, and I'm going to fill that. I've got some uh, scale one by two that I've already pre-painted. Create a door frame here. All right, last one on there. No harm, no foul. I want these moldings to line up, you know, perfectly straight. So I've got a, this is a strip of a three by three down here that I have. Uh, very lightly attached above that that bottom uh, kickboard molding and that way i can just uh, line these up on top of that just above it kind of resting on it and they should all line up nice and straight and that's what it looks like with all the moldings in place all the little details. Hmm. I think we're ready to put the roof on. Now I'm not going to glue the roof on. They don't need to be glued on for one thing. It's a nice tight press fit with these uh, tabs and slots. But um, I don't want them to be glued on in case I ever need to access the interior for any reason. I want to add figures at some point. Right now, I'm just going to Line up these tabs and slots. And press this roof into place. All right, we are in the home stretch of this build. Uh, just a couple of little things to add, and then I'm going to call them done for now. Um, first thing is, there needs to be a number up here. This little crest on top of the ticket booth, each one had a number. They were numbered one, two, three, four, five, uh, from west to east, left to right, as you would come up. So um, I'm modeling ticket booths number one and two, for those keeping track. And I could, I could try and hand paint that on there, but um, it's pretty risky. Uh, I would probably mess it up. And I've got pretty steady hands. It's a tiny little number. And I want it to match and be of the same quality as the rest of the graphics on the building. So I've gone ahead and printed out some little numbers. Yes, I'm cheating once again. I printed out some little numbers. And now I'm going to very carefully cut out a 1 and a 2. As usual, I've given myself extras because, you know, things happen. Uh, I'm going to cut out a 1 and a 2 and uh, put them up on the... Uh, the crest of the building. We'll see how that works. First thing is, I'm going to cut this sheet down so it's easier to work with. I need all this extra paper on here. 
And well, let's start at the beginning. Let's start with number one. Using a brand new blade in my hobby knife for this. Um, you want it to be nice and sharp. And basically just freehanding, following this black line around the outside to the best of my ability. Go back and try and clean up a little bit on the spots that I may have missed, like that white corner right there. And sometimes you can take some sandpaper, like a very fine, like an 800 grit sandpaper, oops, and uh, round it off even more. Cutting out anything round and having it come out round is extremely tricky. And something that's really going to help the look of this is if I uh, paint the edges black to match that outline. So, tiny little brush here. Okay. I think I got it. Well, I got it on the first try. Didn't even need the other extras. <laughs> I think in this case, it's going to be better to put the glue actually on here. By Jove, I think I've got it. Apologies for my terrible British accent. For the actual roofing, I want to simulate the look of uh, rolled asphalt roofing. And I'm going to use some uh, 150 grit sandpaper to do that. See, it's multi-purpose, it says right there. So I'm going to use it for a purpose that it was entirely unintended for. And I'll cut some squares to fit this roof. And then we'll paint them uh, just flat black. Do a little weathering on them with chalks. And it should look pretty good, I think, once it's uh, stuck on there. Now, if you're wondering what the worst possible thing is for your utility knife, <laughs> cutting sandpaper is, is pretty high on the list of things that will ruin your blade faster than anything else. Now, you might think these... Uh, these might be exactly the same for the two roofs, but there are tiny little subtle differences and I want a really nice fit. So I'm going to number them. And this is the front, number one and number two. And that is the front, just number them on the back like that so I don't lose track. And now I can take some, uh, whoops, sorry. And now I can take some black, uh, just flat black front primer, get a coat of paint on these. Now, while I wait for the paint to dry on that sandpaper, I think I'm going to go ahead and put these on their bases. And the bases are nothing fancy. This is just some um, quarter inch thick MDF that I cut and sanded the edges and chamfered the edges a little bit. Um, I'm just going to leave it raw like this. I'm not going to paint it or do any kind of detailing on it. And that's mainly because um, I'm not sure how I, I'm not sure exactly what I want to do there. Uh, I might, I want to go back perhaps in the future and, uh, and uh, do a little more detailing to the base. Maybe, um, like I said, I haven't really decided and I'm running out of the time I have <laughs> to finish this project this week. So I'm just going to lightly tack the, uh, the ticket booths to the, uh, to the base here with a little bit of Eileen's tacky glue, just a couple of spots of it. And that way I can, um, if I want to go back in the future, I can just pop it right off without damaging the model at all. And I've drawn some lines on here so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, 
me. All right, the paint is dry and I've just coated the back with some Super 77 spray adhesive. And you should be able to just drop this right down in here. Like so, we get a little chalk on that to make it look a little less new. White chalk and a little black chalk. Sandpaper's got a really nice tooth, of course, so it, chalk really wants to stick to it. Now I'm going to give that a really light spray of some uh, matte fixative. And now I am working on the flags. This is the, the last detail that I'm going to add uh, to this build at this time. Um, historically, these ticket booths, they, they, had, they had very colorful flags, one at each corner. That's what these little posts were for, to hold little flag poles. And each one had these triangular uh, pennants in different colors going around. Uh, red or orange, blue, yellow, and green. So, let me show you how I am making them. Just using some construction paper in those colors. Cutting a half inch wide strip or two feet wide in O scale. So I want a flag that's about two, two feet by four feet. But at the end here, I'm an extra quarter of an inch. So that end gets folded over in half. And that's actually the sleeve that's going to go around the flagpole. Now for the flagpoles themselves, I'm just using some brass rod. This is, what is this? Hold on. This is some uh, 0.81 millimeter brass rod. And just uh, some white glue. Put it in this fold. And hold in there. Just fold this over. So, then I can use my thumbnail along there to create a seam. I've already drilled some holes in the tops of these posts using my micro drill bits. And now I'm going to fold this so it makes it look like it's flapping in the wind a little bit. Kind of an accordion fold. We'll use some thick CA. Drop it down in this hole back here. The thick CA gives me a little bit of working time so I can make sure it's as straight as I can get it on both axes. All right. And the last flag in. And with that, this little project is done. I have to say, I am very pleased with the way these turned out. This is a project, uh, as I said at the top of the video, that I've uh, been wanting to get to for a long time, and really a lovely little bit of nostalgia for me. Very, very pleased. Hey, and that's going to wrap it up for this one, my friends. Thank you for coming along on that little build journey with me. I appreciate you tuning in. If you want to see more, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. You can also follow Thunder Mesa over on Instagram at thunder.mesa or check out what's new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website at thundermesa.studio. Until next time, keep moving forward, my friends. Adios for now.